The world is filled with phenomenal things for us to learn about, research and uncover. Whether it's a place of cultural significance shared with the wider world, a record-breaking natural disaster, or a recent scientific breakthrough. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be looking at three recent discoveries. Captain John Smith discovered Ajanta Caves The Ajanta Caves are a culturally significant piece of Buddhist religious art. These are approximately 30 rock-cut cave monuments, dating from all the way back to the 2nd century BCE. Within them, the caves feature paintings and rock-cut sculptures, depicting emotions through various forms and poses. Generally, they are considered to be the best surviving examples of ancient Indian art that we have today. They can be found in the Maharashtra state, in western India. In the April of 1819, Captain John Smith, who was a member of the British Army within the Madras Regiment, stumbled across the caves. He had been on a hunting trip and had been in pursuit of a tiger when he came across a ravine, complete with the caves across the other side. When he and his fellow officers continued to explore, the Ajanta Caves were discovered. Captain John Smith marked his place in history that day by scratching some graffiti onto one of the priceless frescoes, visible today in Cave 10. It reads, John Smith, 28th Cavalry, 28th of April, 1819. It was then two centuries later, in 2016, that a descendant of this man made it to the Ajanta Caves, though today it holds significantly more status, valued as a religious site and a world heritage site. The retired Colonel Martin Smith, the great-great-grandson of John Smith, visited the caves walking in the footsteps of his ancestor. The 74-year-old wife of John Smith's descendant, Margaret Smith, reportedly said that it wasn't until they were contacted by someone researching the Ajanta Caves that they even knew that it was their ancestor who had discovered them. She commented that after having been asked, they were really fascinated. These caves were excavated between the 2nd century BCE and the 6th century AD, forming a horseshoe-shaped bend and stretching up to 76 meters in height. Within the monument, it's believed that Smith came up on Cave 10, which functions as the prayer hall. It's wonderful that the world now knows of this phenomenal heritage site of cultural importance, and strange to take note of which stories get passed through generations, and which ultimately get lost to time. Mount Vesuvius eruption turned man's brain to glass. Perhaps one of the world's most famous volcanoes is that which destroyed Pompeii, Mount Vesuvius. This volcano has made a mark for itself as a legend and hasn't been categorized as a supervolcano, despite its significant impact upon the world and our history. The archaeological discoveries that have been made since Pompeii are momentous and groundbreaking, and now, two millennia later, more information continues to be pushed forth. Researchers uncovered the remains of who is thought to be potentially a sole victim of the lethal eruption. The man lost his life, alone, face down on his stomach, having thought to have been asleep, leaving him unable to flee. We are now far from 79 AD, but this Italian research team has discovered that there has been more left behind than the bones. The heat of the eruption, according to these researchers, has seemingly turned the brain of the victim into glass. Research published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2020 laid out the details of this finding, with shards of black, solid matter having been found on the victim's skull. This material then underwent a process called vitrification. This process involves liquid cooling down incredibly fast when there is not any ice crystal formation present. This results in a solution that eventually hardens, forming an amorphous glass. Pierre Pablo Petron, a forensic anthropologist at the University of Naples, commented, It's the very first time that vitrified brain remains have been found. This unique preservation of his brains could be due to the isolated nature of his departure from life. Most of those nearby resided in an ancient seafront town 11 miles north of Pompeii. Many of these victims lost their lives in the waterfront chambers across the Gulf of Naples because of the initial surge of fine ash. 
This individual, however, seemed to be much further from the coast, placing him much closer to Mount Vesuvius. The research seems to suggest that he had been a casualty in the first pyroclastic surge, which is the first hit of fluid mass, usually made up of gas and rock fragments too. These are similar to a pyroclastic flow, but typically contain a higher amount of gas compared to that of rock. In the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, with the pyroclastic flow, the town reached a staggering 968 degrees Fahrenheit. The victim was later covered by the volcanic rock that flooded the town. The man is thought to have been a guard for the college and to have been the only victim of the eruption to have lost his life inside. Research has estimated he was around 25 years old at the time of the eruption and his bones were found by archaeologists excavating a structure that belonged to the college of the Augustas in the 1960s. Despite us knowing of his remains since the 1960s, we didn't know much more about his loss of life until decades later, when in the October of 2018, Patrone made a trip to Herculaneum, the town that suffered the eruption. Patrone said, I saw something shining inside the head, and continued to elaborate, explaining that these had been what he described as glassy black fragments. Even after seeing many other victims of the Mount Vesuvius eruption, this was not something he had observed before, leading him to believe this was from the brain. The next step following this discovery was to test the unknown materials. These were conducted by Piero Pucci, a biochemist who works at the Center for Genetic Engineering in Naples. Following this next step in the analysis, he found that there were plenty of fatty acids within this material, aligning with those that we find within human hair. Unfortunately, despite the match, at this stage, this was still nothing more than a theory as this fatty acid is present in other animals and some vegetables too. Therefore, the presence of these acids alone is not enough to definitively confirm this is a brain made into glass. However, in an article published in 2020, Patron Pucci and their colleagues were able to conclude that this was brain tissue, thanks to the presence of other proteins, common in the brain too, exclusively found around the skull. It's very rare for brain tissue to be preserved, and when it is, it's rarely seen in this form. Patron and his team's discovery is the first time we have seen any sort of brain tissue, human or otherwise, preserved as glass. This is a revolutionary discovery, showcasing a form of preservation that up until now, we did not know was possible. A 1,720-foot tsunami Tsunamis are a type of natural disaster that have wreaked havoc and brought devastation to many people's lives. They are high waves from the sea that are typically a consequence of disturbances such as earthquakes. There are some on record of impressive heights, but none more so than in Latuya Bay in 1958. Latuya Bay, found in Alaska, saw the tallest tsunami that we have ever managed to get on record, as it reached a staggering 1,720 feet earning itself the title of Mega Tsunami. Unfortunately, there were several casualties in this event, with five people losing their lives and many injured and homeless. The wave easily cleared trees and soil, leaving behind bedrock in its place. This tsunami followed an earthquake in the area with a magnitude of 7.8. The earthquake itself had led to significant rockfall, and now there is an ongoing debate that is somewhat prevalent. Was the tsunami a result of the earthquake directly or of the rockfall, which caused a significant disturbance upon impact? Unlike tsunamis, mega tsunamis are not believed to occur through the movement of underwater tectonic activity, but rather by the impact of large materials falling suddenly into or near the water. Here, it's clear why the lines are blurred, thanks to the inconclusive nature of the tsunami's origin. This is not the first time that Lituya Bay has experienced heartbreak at the hands of a tsunami. Over a span of just a century and a half, it's thought that four or five mega tsunamis hit the area. Natural disasters of any volume are devastating, though one of this size, magnitude, and sheer immensity brought huge losses to Alaska, with some suggesting that this was the event that pushed the category of mega tsunami into existence. The world we live in is constantly changing and developing, between old discoveries resurfacing and new technology letting us explore further than ever, 
there is an endless supply of new things to learn. But what are your thoughts on these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.